Welcome back to CarnadiS.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations in set theory. In this video, we're taking a look at what is the absolute intersection of a set. Now, intersection is an operator in set theory. In this video, we're covering what's known as an absolute intersection, an operation on a single set or class. For example, the intersection of C. Not to be confused with relative intersections between two sets or classes. For example, the intersection of A and B, which we covered in a previous video. It's recommended to check that video out first before you take a look at this one. Imagine that we wanted to find the class of all elements that are in every one of a series of classes. So we have a bunch of classes we want to find. What are the elements that are in every single one? You could create a long list of all of those classes using intersection operators to define that class, and it would work perfectly well. So if we wanted to find the elements that are in all of A, B, C, D, and E, we could write the intersection of E and the intersection of D and the intersection of C and the intersection of A and B. But another way to represent this idea would be to create a class of all the classes in that list, call it F, and define F as the class of A, B, C, D, and E. The absolute intersection, which we'll represent as the intersection of F, of this class is the same as the intersection of all of its members. So the intersection of F simply equals the intersection of A, B, C, D, and E, all put together. This is very similar to the idea of an absolute union. So if you're having trouble understanding this, take a look at the previous video on absolute unions because it's a very similar idea. Now, an intersection of a class is a new class that contains only elements that are members of all of the elements of the original class. The intersection of F contains the shared members of the members of F and therefore it contains the elements that are shared by all of A, B, C, D, and E. So, in order to understand this better, let's look at some examples. So, if G is simply equal to the class of the class HI and the class IJ, then the intersection of G is just the class of I, because I is the only member that's in both HI and IJ. If L is equal to the class of the class MOQ, the class MON, and the class MOP, then the intersection of L is equal to the class of MO, because the only classes that are shared by all three members of L are M and O. Q, N, and P are not shared by all three members, and so aren't members of the intersection of L. If A is defined as the class of the class B, C, and the null set, the class D in the null set, and the class of the null set, then the intersection of A is equal to the class of the null set, or the set of the null set. Because the null set is the only common member to all three classes. If K is equal to the class of the class of R and the class of S, then the intersection of K is the null set, because there are no members that are shared by both of those um, members of K. All of this is assuming that all of these variables are independent of each other and not equal to the null set. Setting that aside. The formal definition of an absolute intersection that we will use is for all classes A and all classes B, the intersection of A is equal to B means by definition that for all X, X is a member of B is materially equivalent to for all Y, Y is a member of A implies that X is a member of Y. So in other words, for all classes A and B, B is equal to the intersection of A means that every single member of B must be a member of every single member of A. And every single member of the members of A, which are shared by all members, must be a member of B. So all members of B are elements of all members of A, and all of the elements that are members of the elements of A are members of B. So it goes in both directions. You should note that this is very similar to our definition of uh, absolute unions, just with a universal quantifier instead of an existential quantifier. We'll call this absolute intersection definition in proofs. 
Up next, we're going to be adding a new axiom to our basic universe, the union axiom, now that we've learned about unions and intersections. But before we get to that, go ahead and give these exercises a try and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when the next video comes out and be able to check your work. So for some class definitions, we have a through F, they're the same class definitions we've been using throughout. The exercises try to do the intersection of A, the intersection of D, the intersection of F, the intersection of E, and the intersection of the intersection of E. Yesterday's answers, if you're curious, we have the union of A is simply the class of A, C, D, E, and F. That's because to get the union of A, we're taking the members of all of B, C, and D. So B, we add A and E to our list. C, we add C and D to our list. And D, we add E and F to our list. And that is all the members in there. For the union of B, once again, we're taking all the members of A, so that's B, C, D, and all the members of E, which is just the null set. So the union of B is just B, C, D, and the null set. For the union of C, we have all the members of C, which is just C and D, and all the members of D, which is E and F. For the union of D, we have all the members of E, which is the null set, and all the members of F, which is A and the null set, so the union of D is A and the null set. And for bonus, the union of the union of A, we go look at what we got for our union of A, which was A, C, D, E, and F. So we have all the members of A, that's B, C, and D. We have all the members of C, which is C and D, so those are already included. We have all the members of D, which is E and F, add those in. We have all the members of E, which is adding back in the null set. And we have all the members of F, which adds in A at the beginning, and we have a duplicate of the null set from E. So we have this big, lovely class of A, B, C, D, E, F, and the null set. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Stay tuned for a brand new video every single day this month, and stay skeptical, everybody.